and a week after I, I, I learned I was moving to London. So one of the first things I did, which was ridiculous, I booked my appointment with you for like the first day of That's not ridiculous, so, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> well thought, well thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey guys, welcome back to the Real Gentleman YouTube channel. Uh, here at the Hunch Method. We've got Biani in the chair today. Uh, we are looking at doing something um, quite, a, quite, a, quite a sort of modern uh, on trend here at the moment. Um, but we keep quite a, uh, quite a lot of length in this fringe and have a little bit of texture through here, but kind of sweeping over to one side and then working down to like maybe like a two on the back of the side, what we discussed. Um, you'll see a lot of this hair, this, this hair is, like, is pretty much what everyone's wearing at the moment. Um, what we're going to look at doing today is trying to maintain quite a bit of fringe. Um, obviously taking, taking it down a little bit as well. We try and maintain a lot more fringe through here, kind of sweeping it over to one side, but having quite a nice sort of short number two. And still taking it fairly high at the back. So the main focus is having this kind of longer fringe, shorter through here, uh, and then taking it fairly high. But obviously not too high at the back when we take the crown off, but just still quite a nice high blend from the number two. Uh, if Bianca's neck is quite comes down to a little bit of a point at the bottom, so we'll take that up nice and tight, and then taper in the side bends a bit, maybe blend it down into the stubble as well. So it's quite a very, very modern um, haircut that you see around quite a lot now as well, and it's uh, quite a nice one too. We haven't done one yet, so it's quite nice to do. Um, so what we'll do, we'll start by giving a wash and condition, and then we'll uh, collapse straight on into the hair as well. Right. So I've um, just washed it and conditioned it. Nice blank canvas for me now, and. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my horseshoe section. Now, the last haircut was cut into very much like a side part kind of thing. But I want to try and take that kind of part in a way because we, we had a little discussion uh, before we started, just a brief consultation about what we were looking to do today. And uh, Vianne showed me a picture. And it was this very high, it was a lot shorter than the two, wasn't it? It was like probably more like a one that, that picture. Uh, but it was mainly very, very front heavy, over to one side. Uh, a lot shorter than the crown here. Just from the previous circle though, it's just a little bit too parted for, for what I'm, in my mind, I'm thinking to do. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll get rid of that disconnection. So we'll do a horseshoe part, maybe slightly, just maybe it's slightly higher on the round of the head, and then just drop it down towards the crown here as well. So exposing a lot more of the back and sides. What that allows me to do is allows me to connect in what I need, and also leaves a little bit of length that I can work through to connect in this point as well. But the main focus again is this fringe being a lot longer than everywhere else. Very loose, quite pushed over to one side. So I'm working from the right and I'm working all the way around. I'm following this around as well. So as you can see, why I did this a little bit higher on the round, is we've got a little bit of overhang, which I want to get rid of. I don't think it's worth for the look that I'm gonna like the, the look that I've got in my mind, this isn't really gonna work. So that's why I want to get rid of that. I want to make it a bit more versatile for Viani as well. So I don't want it to be too structured, but I still want it to be structured in the hair. But I still want it to be able to get up in the morning, run his fingers through his hair like that, and it looks cool. And we can create something that's going to be versatile, very easy to understand. That's what I'm. That's what I try and aim for in my hair. So now I'm going to dry the sides through because I'm working on the clipper work. So I want to dry this through, see exactly how it's going to fall for me. Looks like it's got a very straight, but also gets a little bit finer through the sides here. So I want to dry this through, see exactly how it will fall when it's dry. Right, so we're going for number two on the back of the sides, that's what he'd like, I think that's a really nice length, but obviously what we'll do towards the bottom we'll start to taper that in tighter towards the neck, just to get a bit more symmetry in his neckline, just because it comes kind of to a point, I want to try and get rid of that point, and just add a little bit more of a nice, uh, nice sort of symmetrical fade at the very bottom of the neck. As you can see it's spiky a little bit through here, so I want to try and preserve a bit of length, I don't want to spike out too much. Again, this other side's got quite a big disconnection, so I want to try and get rid of that as well. So we're working up to about here, because as you can see, the back, back, back of his head doesn't flatten too much, it's got a nice bit of shape to there as well. His obstacle bone at the back kind of, it does protrude a little bit more, but that will be fine when it comes to tapering, so we'll try and create kind of a bit more flatness to the back. But as you can see, it doesn't flatten too much here, so I can get away with going a bit higher as well. And because the main focus is the fringe, I want to take the crown fairly short as well, a bit shorter than I normally would. So my line there, so I think got a nice bit of room to blend up. So I'll probably start my blend from here and work down. No, I think I, I looked at it after seeing the add on. Number two done, back to side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna blend the side bends down into the beard a little bit and then just taper the neck in 
So you get a bit of nice tape. So I'm start working on one and a half, then number one, then half, then zero. We're gonna work down that way through the back and then just figure out the length. It's probably about maybe a one or maybe a just over a 0.5. So I'll blend that down into there. We're gonna start to work on this taper here. I've started to strengthen up this neckline by going a bit shorter. So it takes away that kind of sparseness. So it starts to look a lot fuller. So I'll start to create a nice uh, taper right down to the bottom. Now I'm going to go down to my number one. We're a little bit lower down now. And so go down as well. Catch any of them hairs. I go in a different direction. And then I'm going to take my number one guard off. And I'm going to place a line at the bottom. Just purely again for symmetry. So I'm going to look at the point where it's all even. So what we're looking for here is we're looking for a point where you can almost see a line through here. So I'm going to look at it comes down to here and it goes up and down again. So both sides seem to have that kind of symmetry either side there. So I'm going to cut it off to that and blend it out. And that way, as we start to fade it down, it's going to have to symmetric with the line. It's going to be a lot more symmetrical. So then the fade will look symmetrical as well. And I'm going to start with my 0.5. I'm going to go a little bit lower down from where the number one was. Oh no. Look up and off like that. Turn that around as well. And we're in between my north and my 0.5. I'm just going a little bit higher from that line into our 0.5. There we go. So I'm going to work on the side bends now. I'm just going to blend this down just through the sides here. It's a little bit dark through here. As you can see, you get a bit more scalp exposure through the sides. So I'm going to work that down a little bit into the side bend. So work on the one and a half. And I'll take that one and a half across the ear as well to start a nice taper. Remove any of that longer hair that we don't need that you can't get with the number two guard. And just work on from the beard into the side bend. And just up around the edge of the hairline as well with the number one. And I'll take the guard off. Teeth facing forward. And we'll run that down nicely into the beard. Okay. What we'll do now, start the blend. I'm going to wet his hair down just a tiny, tiny bit. I mean, just a couple of sprays. Just feels a little bit dry, and because there's a little bit of poking out, I just want them to sit a bit flatter. So you can see a little bit, of, little spritz of water. Nothing really, I'm not going to soak his hair. I just want this to be able to sit a little bit flatter for me. Really, just so you can see the, 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 uh, the teeth marks from the comb through the hair. So you're looking for. I'm going to work off from that starting point. Going down into my number two. Now I'm going to turn around and start working down as well. This will really cap off the spiky hair on the sides. More of a smoother finish. Following the guide from the middle, working from the right to the left into the guide that I cut previously. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I'll move back there. I'll just come down on a, a Thursday and, uh, and stay in a hotel. Mm. And just uh, do my Thursday, Friday, Saturday and go back. So it's really good. So what I've just done then is, after finishing working down, I'm just kind of going over the blend and up to the 0.5 lever, so pull the lever back and just working over that blend again. Just don't, I don't want to go too far in, I just want a bit more of a softer finish. I always find if you work on the 0.5 as you're blending in, it just gives a bit of a softer finish to the blend. It's not as harsh because you have the teeth to the feet, it feeds into the teeth and it gives a bit more of a softer finish. So now we'll start off with our edging, so it's just detail. Through the sides here, sharpen that off a little bit. Again, I'm not cutting into his hairline too much, just going to sharpen this through a little bit more, more for him. And working through it, so I'm going to taper this in. It just starts to expose the hairline, so I'm not going to cut too far in. 
I'm just going to kind of tidy it up, give it a bit more of a sharper finish to it. It's also really good to make sure you get any of the little longer hairs that your clipper guards miss. Because when you're working on hair like this, which has got a bit of a kind of wiry feel to it, kind of like slightly curly, a little bit finer as well, you're too gone because it's so big it will miss hair. So I always find when you're working over, especially on a, I use a size 5, kind of matador size 5, when you press down on the, on the scalp, it won't go any shorter than the two. So you know that whatever you're working through the side, it's going to be down. If you're working on number two, it's going to be exactly a number two. Sharpen this off for them. So if you look at the neckline there, Liam, you can see by taking the hairline up at the back, not too high, but just enough that it adds that symmetry to it, you wouldn't really think that he's got the hair down to here in that kind of point. So that's why I always do that. Try and find that common kind of line in the hair that way it's almost if you put a line through it, it would look square. And that way, when you start to work in your taper, you know it's going to have that symmetry to it as well. So we've just finished with the back and sides. Now I'm going to work through this top now. So again, the point for this finish is we want it to be quite front heavy. Over to one side, a little bit of looseness, a bit of like kind of texture in there, movement. But then we want it to be very short at the back, so there's kind of a short texture through there as well. So I'm going to comb it out from the crown. See how that starts to sit. Put it all the way through to the front. So you can see there's quite a lot of length in this fringe here, which is fine, but we want to take it down a little bit. But we also need that connection as well that we can work through. So when we work our brush and we blow dry that over, it doesn't sit or overhang too much. So I still want to connect this side in. So that maybe slightly leave a, a slight disconnection on this side, you get the height and the length, but it also connects into this way as well. Just this crown here, so just going a little section before, so I know I'll cut it off. You can see there's quite a lot of length through here. And then as it gets a little bit shorter through the, through the corner here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably lose about half the length of this. Does that sound okay for you? Yeah. yeah. About half the length, yeah? Yeah. And then as you graduate, that's longer towards the fringe. So about that much off. So fingers straight. Pull it straight up in the air. I'm not angling it anywhere. Just going straight up in the air. Follow my guy from the back. So as we get to this point here, I'm going to start to over direct the fringe. That's where we start to maintain that length. At this point now, I'm going to start to over direct it back to that section. That'll still maintain a bit of length, but it'll also take some length off the fringe as well. But ultimately, it'll be longer towards the front. When we close, we create a nice bit of squareness in there. I'm going to follow the round of the head. As you can see, I've got my guide from both sides here. I'm not looking to leave any corner in this. It'll be completely square off the clipper work we've just done then. Bring this fringe back. Put that corner through there. Bring this back and I'm going to cut it at that point of the recession here. So that way I know when I cut the fringe, if it falls over to this side, which we want it to, I know it won't overhang because we've cut it in. Here we go. You can see you cut it on this angle on the fringe, but as that sits over, when we cut this little bit through here, that won't overhang, that'll sit in nicely for them as well. Same thing the other side. Work it from the middle, just off the centre, to the left hand side. Guide and guide. Still cutting this straight up. I'm not at the recession point yet. But I am now, so this will come back to that previous guide. So you can see by leaving that little bit around through here, I can connect it in with my fingers to the top as well. And the same principle to get to the recession points when you want to start to over direct the fringe. But for now, I'm just connecting in this side. And this bit of the fringe, and it's all the way around. You see, bring it back to here. Now you've got your nice connection through the side as well. You still maintain a nice bit of length through the fringe, which soups over, and then a short text through the back to create a little bit of movement through there as well. But it looks as though it's just getting a bit drier, just over time, it's very long. 
that may snap shorter, so I want to make that a bit thicker in time. Thicken this off a little bit for him as well. A bit more structure to the fringe. So I'm going to use a fire tea. I'm going to cut to the point where it gets a bit dry. And there's also a guide underneath there as well, which I'm looking for. So I'm going to cut this nice and blunt. Especially when it's a bit finer towards the fringe, you don't really need to point cut into it, because it'll create its own texture. And match it up to the side, but we're keeping that angle almost coming down to a point. I want to maintain a little length of the front bit there. Final thing to do is to connect the crown in. As you can see, I've left that to the end. I'm going to comb it out the direction it wants to grow in. So that's the best way to follow it then. So you know you can't make any mistakes. I'm going to follow the guy from behind. As you can see, I'm going to cut this straight through. I'm going to follow the way the hair is going to come down that blend. So my finger's going to drop down slightly as well. Because again, if I go a bit too high, I'm going to put the crown off here. So that's why I'm working a bit lower. If I was here, that would take the crown off. I want it to here just to blend, as you can see. Now a lot more hair will come through this side, again, from the last haircut of it being a parting, and also from where the crown's based slightly more to the right as well. And then what we do is we bring down into a horizontal section, straight up the head, just cut that through there. And you see the crown being so far on the right, there's going to be a lot more hair through here. So I'm bringing this out, just cutting this slightly short towards this corner here. And I'm just going to go over it with a scissor of a comb, just to make sure the blend is perfect. Working down into that taper as well. There we go. So now I'm going to use a tiny little bit of razor wear just to create a little bit of movement. But because this here's a bit of a fine texture, I don't want to go overboard with this. I just want to pick little bits out, just add a little bit of texture to it as well, just to break it up. So it's working sporadically at the top. A little bit of root lift in there as well. And just work out and let my fingers come up and out. I'm just bringing my fingers up and working right all the way to the top. Just one section before the fringe. A little bit of lift in there, just so we get a bit of height in that fringe. And that'll be fine. So just on this bit of blend here, just working across to break up that blend so it's not too blunt. Mix it up a little bit. So yeah, it's not to sit nicely. Just one section back from the fringe and we'll raise it through this as well. Let's give it a little bit of height so you can see it stands up nicely there. And that's it, so what we'll do, we'll start it through now. I want to show you a way of using the Regal Gentleman Mac Clay in a slightly different way. So I'm going to put this into his hair while it's damp. So this is now starting to dry, so this is towel dried now. So this is still a bit damp, it's not soaked and wet. I'm going to dry the clay in. Fine, when you've got finer texture of hair, when you apply product on top of finer hair, it can make, weigh it down a lot. So because we're looking for a little bit of height, a little bit of movement in the fringe, I'm going to put it into the hair towel dry and dry it in. And you'll see it'll give a very similar effect, but you're not applying it afterwards to a low, which will kind of um, weigh it down a bit. You still get the same kind of finish. So what I'll do, yeah, a little bit of the Regal Gentleman Mac Clay. Again, not a lot, five piece size, and work it through into my hands. I'll apply it when it's towel dry. It's a little, a little bit damp. And now I'm gonna dry this in. So good, another little uh, different way of using this product to still create a bit more of a slightly different effect, to, especially if you've got a little slightly finer hair. Got a round brush, a medium size, small to medium size, and I'm going to use that for the fringe. But for the majority, I'm going to use my fingers, right? Medium speed, high heat, and working from the crown. I'm starting to dry this in. So you still have the feel of the clay in there. It's just as it's drying in, you get a slightly uh, stronger hold to it as well. But again, finer hair. It's always nice to apply what we call a base product in. And this is acting like the base and the styling product as well. So it creates a very, very dry texture to the hair. So it looks like he's got nothing in his hair. Which for finer hair, or lighter coloured hair, like blondes or uh, like mousy browns, it's perfect for. Starting from the back. You can see all that texture coming through there. I'm drying this in. Now let's get to the fringe. Separate this and just roll it around the brush. You get a nice bit of shape in there as well. Let 
when it finish off. Rough drying it with my fingers. <clears throat> but again, on the finished look, you sweat the clay in there, you dried it in, but you've got a lot of movement and you're not applying it on top, so it's not gonna weigh it down when you apply the product. But you still feel this clay in there, but it's a lot more of a more natural effect, which I think works better when you've got finer hair. It's also something that I, I learned this on a, on a shoot, um, purely by, by mistake. I didn't dry his hair thoroughly, applied the product, then I thought, oh, we better dry this off a little bit more. I had to dry it through it, allowed me to reapply the product later on through the shoot. But I found that when I applied it to clients, and like, especially when they're, they're going out, or so just giving this tip to a client, they found that it, the hair looked like it had nothing in it. So completely effortless style, yet they're still put this. You still have the hold of the product, you still have the feel of the product. You just can get the look of the product, which I think is is, is something that is, I personally, a lot of, I, I prefer that look as well. How's that look for you, Vianna? That's great. Nice, isn't it, man? Yeah. Sweet. Love it. So, to recap, um, what we did was we, we're looking for that kind of a bit more kind of a longer top heavy kind of especially more towards the fringe so a bit more fringe heavy and a lot of sort of short section through the back here as well so what we decided was a two back and sides because that was the 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 length of Vianney asked for which i thought worked, worked really really well because it gets a little bit sparser through here so i think if we went any shorter than that it might show a bit too much scalp exposure kind of ruin the look because you don't want to try and show some scalp and try to aim for a bit of a more the focus being on the front so they want to ruin that so we did a two back and sides and then we went into like quite a high taper on Fiona's neck because the bottom it kind of came down to a point. So I leveled that off with symmetry and then tapered into the line to blend that out. And then through the top, we went a lot shorter through here. And the previous circle was a bit more of a side part, which I thought we could take that out today and have more of a, a pliable kind of more versatile haircut. So I took it a lot shorter through the crown, so I took about half the length off. So there's about an inch and a half left, maybe lengthwise. And then as I got to the recession point here, where the hairline starts to work itself back towards the temple, I brought every so the last two sections of the fringe back into that section. So that maintains a lot more length of the fringe, but you still take a length off the fringe, so it kind of graduates nice and smooth. Then work through the side, so I've done one section through here, then cut the corners in, because we created a nice squareness through the clipper work. But the key thing for this entail was, for me, was the style, and was showing you guys a bit of a different way of using the matte clay. Because obviously everyone, everyone knows a product is to put on their hair when it's dry to style it. But there's a lot of tricks that you and tips that you can do uh, with the product that doesn't always have to be put on dry hair. You can dry it into from wet into dry hair as well. What that will create is this finish. So totally matte, completely matte. It doesn't look like anything's in his hair. It looks completely effortless. Yet if he runs his fingers through his hair, he'll feel the clay in there. So that is good for anybody who doesn't want to look like they've overstyled the hair. So. Um, if you want to look like you've, you've literally gone up and it's completely effortless, this is a good way to do it. So apply a peanut size amount into towel dried hair. So the hair just wants to feel damp, not, not soaking wet, just a little bit damp. Rub it all in like shampoo and then dry it with the hair dryer. Use your fingers or a, or a brush and dry that product in and you'll, you'll see the texture come out. You'll see, you'll feel the product drying in, but it'll just feel like there's still product in there. It's pretty amazing, give it a go. Uh, but what you'll find is that you've got the whole of the product still You've got, the, you've got the kind of the, the, the feel of the product being in here, but you haven't got the look of the product. It looks like he's literally done nothing to his hair, and it's just like that. Now, I think everyone wants that kind of look where it looks like you've made no effort, and it looks great. So that's that would be my good tip on this. It, for any hairstyle, it doesn't have to be this hairstyle, it any hairstyle, but it works really, really well in finer hair as well, because it gives a thicker feel to it as well. So you're not overloading product into finer hair, which will always basically bring it down. It, it just, it'll just kind of fall oh, like, throughout the day which we don't want. So uh, that was a good little tip for me for, for what I've I kind of picked up over the years. Um, and yeah, and that was pretty much it. Started it into kind of the fringe coming to one side and a little bit of movement for the top and that was kind of really very pliable, very easy to do. Happy? Very happy. That's good. That's always good. Cool. Thanks, man.